Well, it's nice to be joined by Richard, a local historian and uh, artist. Uh, well, well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Now, that looks interesting. Uh, where are we? Well, we're on what we call the Pilgrim Way, um, uh, running up through Cumbran. Uh, a pilgrim route running from Lantana Abbey to Clendervil, and then from Clendervil on to Penrith. Uh, shrine and then on to St. David's. So, sounds interesting and we've got a nice interesting looking hollow way and hollow way sort of shouts age at you straight away and I suppose you could get that from, from where but you think we might be looking at something else don't you? You've got some evidence that we might be looking at a made up road. Do you think the monks made it? Um, I think the road predates the monks. I certainly think they made improvements. Uh, the, the archaeological evidence is that there is actually two tracks. There's one cut into the bedrock, which I presume is older than the cobbled track on alongside it. A cobbled track is actually quite impressive for a medieval road, isn't it? I mean, this must have been something that took a lot of traffic. Well, we know we know that that um, Clendervil was an important shrine, mm. uh, the third mm. biggest shrine in Wales, and the Lantern um, uh, Abbey was making a fair bit of money out yeah. of it. So I think the yeah. resources were there to improve the worth, the, the infrastructure. W yeah, worth investing in what we now call infrastructure. I mean, we know Certainly. we know that the monks built bridges to take the road across the rivers, going further west towards Penrith. So it is quite likely that they did some work on this section as well. So we're looking at something quite unusual, yeah, a medieval made road. And we have evidence that the Cistercians built bridges over the major uh, waterways of Cumbran right. as well. Right, well, it sounds interesting. So many pilgrims yeah, must have yeah. walked along this road. Great, so, so we show, show you go, go and have a closer look. Yeah. We've got some amazing old walls here and they're actually on both sides of the track which is significant because the track must have been quite wide at this point and we've got these strange lumps of stone that seem to have fallen out of the walls so what have we got here Richard? Well um, the locals call it pudding stone and yeah. uh, I presume that's because of its mix but uh, it's actually quartz conglomerate it's the modulus uh, are 500 million years old and the matrix it's in is 325 million years old and it was created in a river estuary all that time back or on a, a, a seabed. Right, so why have they used it in the walls? Well that's interesting, um, possibly it possibly had some religious significance uh, in the early medieval. Uh, there are, There is evidence of it being taken to St. Shrines and put in Christian graves. Yeah, I think you've got a good point there because th th there's all sorts of evidence that quartz did have some sort of significance in the early medieval period. You find it associated with burials, for example. Sometimes in early medieval inhumation, the only thing you find is a single quartz pebble. There are examples at places like Van Dock, for example. So I think you may be on to something with that. Excellent, excellent. Because it's not easy stuff to work, is it? Not and at all. It's in these huge great lumps, which must have been very, very difficult to move. So they must have chosen it deliberately. Well, it's not easy to work. There's only one thing harder than this white quartz, and that's diamond. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not an easy stone to work. And the blocks they're using right across Cumbran, some of them weigh up to four or five ton. Now, how you could move something like that is beyond me. Yeah. Because RJCPs yeah. can only pick up a ton. Yeah. So again, I think it's telling us this is an important route. An important route, a lot of manpower invested into yeah. it. Obviously, uh, money was to be made. Yes, yes. <laughs> so let's move on. Yeah.